Hello and welcome to this Excel Monte Carlo tutorial. An Excel Monte Carlo simulation creates future predictions by using probabilistic and random methods. Usually around 10,000 simulations are run to achieve a reliable outcome. As an example, we are going to create a simulation like this with random dice rolls. We are going to roll 3 dice and examine the probability that the sum of the dice is 17 or higher and we are going to do this 10,000 times. The simulation can be refreshed by hitting the F9 key, which will result in a slightly different outcome. We start by simulating these three dice rolls. To do this, we can use the rand between function. Here you have to insert two arguments, a bottom value and a top value, that represent the lower and upper boundaries of the range in which random numbers will be drawn. We use normal dice, so our values are 1 and 6. We copy this formula down for the other dice rolls, and then take the sum of the numbers at the bottom of our table. The second step is to produce numerous simulations of these three rolls. We create 10,000 simulations as this is a common number of simulations to obtain a reliable result. We are going to insert the series 1 to 10,000 on the worksheet. You can do this by typing 1, selecting that cell and navigating to the fill button on the home tab. We select series and the series box opens. We are going to change the value from rows to columns. You want a linear series, so we can leave this option like it is. The step value is 1, and for stop value we are going to enter 10,000. Then press OK, and the numbers 1 to 10,000 appear on the screen. Next to number 1, you refer to the sum of the dice, as this is what you would like to produce simulations of. To create the actual simulations now, you select all 10,000 numbers and the sum value. This can be done by making use of Ctrl Shift combination with the right arrow and Ctrl Shift in combination with the down arrow. Next, you navigate to the Data tab, to a diff analysis and Data table. The row input cell can be left blank and for the column input cell, you select whatever empty cell on the worksheet. Excel will use this cell to make its calculations for the simulations. The third and last step is to verify the number of times the simulated sum is above or equal to 17 and divide this by 10,000 to find the probability. To count the number of cells with a number of 17 or higher, we use the COUNTDIFF function. Here we need to insert a range and criteria. The range are the simulated numbers and the criterion is higher than or equal to 17, which we need to put in between quotes. We need to complete the calculation, so I'm going to add divide by 10,000 after the brackets. If we now hit enter, we receive a simulated value of 10,000 tries. I want to see this number in a percentage. We click on this number and select format cells. In this menu you can select percentage. Two decimal places are fine, and click on OK to confirm. As mentioned earlier, in Excel you can refresh your entire sheet by pressing the F9 key. So the simulation runs each time you hit refresh, and as you can see, this has a small impact on our percentage as expected. The probability we calculated earlier can be determined with simple math or trial and error. So as a final element of this video, we can compute the exact probability. We have already prepared this on another sheet of this workbook. The table on the left lists all dice combinations that satisfy our requirements of having a sum of at least 17. The table on the right computes the probability. To do so, we divide the number of satisfying combinations by the number of possible combinations. The number of satisfying combinations is 4 as listed on the left hand table. I'm going to use the count function as this provides future flexibility. The number of possible outcomes for the sum of the three dice is computed by 6 to the power of 3, as we have 6 possible outcomes for each dice. If we then divide the first number by the second, we can see that the probability of having a sum above 17 is 1.85%, which is close to the outcome based on our simulations. This concludes our tutorial on Monte Carlo simulations in Excel. It is possible to create much more complicated simulations, but I'll leave this to the more advanced tutorials. That's it for now. Make sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel tutorials, or if you are interested in general software-related content. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.